Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I wanted to sit down and film the little $1,000 Sephora tag video. This was a tag originally started by Emily Noel here on YouTube and I've seen it go around a ton here recently and I can't help but do it. Honestly, when I first started watching the videos, I was kind of thinking to myself, there's no way that I could fill up $1,000 worth of makeup in, in a shopping cart, but I am just so naive and, and do not know myself apparently because when I sat down and started adding items to my cart, I was shocked that I ended up having to take some out <laughs> just to get it back closer to the thousand dollars because I was way over a thousand dollars so why don't we go ahead I'm gonna be looking down at my phone some but let's go through all the items that I would put into my thousand dollar fantasy shopping cart because there's no way in the world that I could ever buy all of this but let's go ahead and jump in Okay, so let's start out with the more boring items. I started thinking through my like face makeup routine and started with like primers. And the only primer that I really thought to put in there was the Bobbi Brown, it's the Vitamin Enriched Face Base Primer. And I know I've heard so many people talk about it and I think I feel like I've heard Emily Noel talk about it too in terms of you kind of go in expecting that it will, will feel like overpriced and overhyped, but it actually feels really nice. And that's always been something that catches my eye just because I really like things with good skincare ingredients. And I think that one's one of the ones that you could count on to have like really good skincare ingredients. And it does a little bit of priming for your skin too. And occasionally, especially in the winter time, I really struggle with dry skin. So that one really has my curiosity peaked. But for $60, I doubt that would ever wind up in my car realistically. So that Bobbi Brown primer is the only primer that ended up in my car, but I did have a couple foundations end up in there. First and foremost was the a Double Wear from Estee Lauder. I have heard so many people rave about this foundation and I've, I really, I've come really close to purchasing it like one time, but again, it's $43 and I'm, I think I hold off and hope that one day it might end up on like a 21 days of beauty sale or something like that because I, it's just, especially with the fact that I have about 20 something uh, foundations in my collection, I haven't let myself bite the bullet on that one, but that is one, when my collections get down, or when, when my foundations get down to a like reasonable number, that is one I definitely wanna try one day. Another foundation on this list is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. And this is one that, again, almost got me one time because it is really, like you get a good amount. I think you get more than the standard one ounce of foundation. It is $40, so I felt like, yeah, it, it might be $40, but you do, I think it's like 1.7 ounces. It's 1.6 fluid ounces. So you get more than your standard foundation, and I thought that might be worth the price. Plus, I like the idea that it's um, not the, it's kind of like a medium coverage, and I do have trouble like staying matte in my T-zone, and so I've heard it's a, de a decent foundation for like combo skin types, so that one's one on my list. And the last foundation on my list is here is the Beauty Blender, the Bounceable, the one with the pump and it has like the little cup, if you lay it on its side it like pulls into there and you can dip your Beauty Blender in it. I don't, I don't know. I think the packaging is super cute and I've heard a couple people review it and say they really liked it and I've always wanted to try something from Beauty Blender even though I've never tried the sponge or anything and I, I don't know, that one for some reason I get this close to being sucked in and it, it again it, I could see like one day way 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 in the future when I get my foundation collection under somewhat control I could see myself splurging on an item like this to try if especially if I still hear good things at that point or considering it doesn't get discontinued before then. Okay, moving on to like under, under eye kind of things. I do have two under eye products here. I have the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. I've heard a lot of people talk about this item too, and I do struggle quite bad with really dark under eyes and especially like inner corner right here my the inner corner of my eyes are pretty deep set and they're dark and i try to color correct but i haven't really found an item that works 100 percent well for me so that one is one that i would consider trying and then also another concealer that i want to try is tarte it's there so the one that i'm talking about is the maracuja creaseless under eye concealer and this one is one that I've heard Hot and Flashy talk a lot about. And one of my close friends actually also uses this concealer and she's not like a, she doesn't really follow makeup uh, channels and that kind of thing, but she loves that concealer. And it, it always looks pretty nice. And I'm, I, I, I use currently right now, I use Tarte Shape Tape. And I do love how high coverage it is, even though sometimes I have to sacrifice 
looking a little bit more dry than I want to. So I would hope that maybe that under eye concealer would have the coverage similar to Tarte Shape Tape, but without some of the dryness. So that's partly why my curiosity is peaked for that one. Okay, let's move into face powders. This one is kind of, I think it actually might be a powder foundation. I'm talking about the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin like powder. And this one is one that I've seen a couple people use as powder foundation and they talk about how like full coverage it is and it looks, but it still doesn't look like powdery powdery on your face. I think I also, Kaylee, Kaylee Wesley, if you're watching this, let me know, is this the same powder that you raved about in one of your videos? Because if it is, I, that one's really got my interest peaked. And with that being said, would I even be like a, a beauty YouTube watcher if I didn't mention the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Palette? Um, I, I definitely, I've never tried anything from Hourglass. Uh, I have a little primer sitting over here for myself to try. I meant to try it today and completely forgot about it. And I want to try some of the powders one day because I just keep hearing over and over and over how high quality they are and how luxurious they are. And so I think maybe buying one of those little trio um, palettes would be something where I could try a couple different um, products. But also it is $64 and that is very scary for a price. So before I mention eyeshadows, I have one lip product kind of duo thing that I want to mention. Uh, I noticed on Sephora's site the other day that they had a Fenty like beauty little duo that had the gloss or the diamond beauty balm mini lip gloss and highlighter set and it has like the universal or no it, I think it's the the lip gloss in the shade fussy and then it has like the mini of the diamond balm uh, like highlighter the one that's just kind of sparkly and it has like a sheer base I really want to try that. I don't mind glittery highlights and from what I hear it doesn't it is like it is glittery in the sense that there's no base to it so that you're gonna see more sparkles than you would other ones but from what I hear it still looks really pretty because these like particles in it aren't very big at all. So it's got my, it really has my interest. I have also not tried anything from Fenty Beauty and I really want to. And I think those two items are the ones that I were was most interested in from the line so far. So the C that they have like a little duo thing, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about maybe for my birthday, which is in August, that I might ask for that or get that for myself, but I'm not quite sure yet. So let's go ahead and talk about the ridiculous amount of eyeshadow palettes that I put in my cart. So I'll start with the most expensive, I think, and that would be the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. This was one that really got me. So first of all, I really like the packaging of the, like that, that style packaging. So I had to reach over here. I have the gold palette and I, I just think that this packaging, I know not, it's not everybody's favorite. I think it's really nice and luxurious and I really like the feel of it. And when the Metropolis palette came out, I was like, okay, good. I like that packaging and you get like I think it's like 25 shades or something. You get more shades than the 15 or so that you get in there. And I thought the shades in that palette was, were gorgeous. I love those grungy tones. I like the greens. I already love like bronzies, bronzes and like warm tones like that. So I, I was very drawn to that palette, but I've never seen it go on sale. And I'm just, I, I have never bought a Natasha Denona palette unless it was on sale. So I am trying to stick to my guns and do the same here. And that probably means since that one's limited edition that I'll never actually get my hands on it, but I can admire it from afar and just give credit to Natasha Denona for it. I find that a lot of the palettes that pique my interest from her, I just have to give so much credit to the color story on those things because they're very inspiring and very interesting. And I just can't help but like want to buy them. And with that being said, I should also give credit to the other Natasha Denona little palette. I want the mini retro palette. Those like pinks and the grayish with the little green to it. Like I, I'm so intrigued by that palette and I really am thinking also that I might pick that up for my birthday, but we'll see. That and also the mini gold, like the mini gold. Uh, see, I can't make my mind up, but I can't buy two of them because then that would cost me $50 and I'm not ready to spend $50 on eyeshadow right now. So I don't know. I'm really, I'm really considering getting at least one of those mini palettes by the end of the year, but man, if it's not really hard to decide which one. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the other expensive ones that I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the Pat McGrath. If, I mean, who would I be also if I didn't include a Pat McGrath palette in here? And I have two of them that have piqued my interest. One is the Mothership, uh, it looks like one eyeshadow palette. Sorry, I'm reading really small writing on my phone. Uh, and I think it's the subliminal one. And it's got these beautiful like blues on the end, These those like special shades. 
And I've seen, so I was in Sweden the other day, like I had to go to like there's a store here called Normal where I get like body lotion and toothpaste and um, like cleaning stuff. I mean, it's, it's just this little bitty store, but they have a little makeup section right dead in the center. And they carry a ton of makeup revolution stuff there. And I was swatching a little palette that I had never seen. I think it's like called the day and night palette or something. And I was noticing that the, they had a couple shades in there that were really actually, I was like, wow, these are really pretty. Wow, you go makeup revolution because sometimes the quality I find is not really always very consistent with Makeup Revolution. And I was very intrigued by that palette, really liked it. Walked out of the store going, wow, I like that. And I looked it up and it's a dupe for this palette. And so I was thinking to myself, well, if you like it that much, I might as well put it into the Sephora fantasy cart where I go, well, the story was absolutely breathtaking. And if the like swatches of the Makeup Revolution palette were that good, then you would probably really enjoy the real palette. So I had to put that in here along with the Pat McGrath, the other one, the Mothership 2, no, 5, 5 Bronze Seduction palette. And again, that one's the one with that red. It's got those kind of greeny shades and I'm sucker for anything green. And plus, I think that the the other shades in the palette, they all look extremely wearable to me. Like I would wear all of them. That could be an everyday palette for me. And, but it, it also can't because it's $125. So yeah, that, that will probably never happen. But I can definitely admire the beauty in those palettes. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the ridiculous amount of other palettes. I'll go ahead with Huda, Huda Beauty. I've never bought anything from Huda Beauty either and I'm, I'm so intrigued by her neon like palettes that came out. Was it last year? I think it was maybe last year, maybe even a little bit longer than that. Uh, I want all three of them. I want the pink, I want the orange, I want the yellow. And I love the idea of neon shades. I don't know if I could actually pull it off on the regular, but I can uh, really appreciate the fact that um, I would love some neon shades. I missed out on the ColourPop neon collection because they that was released like shortly after I moved to Sweden and it just didn't seem worth it to buy something that I would probably have to wait a year to get my hands on and I didn't feel like paying customs and I didn't know how all that worked for here. But And I believe it sold out super fast. So those neon palettes are just gorgeous. They they really pique my interest, but I'll, I'll probably never get those either. Speaking of another neon item, now this one I might end up considering purchasing. The little, and I'm talking about the little neon liners, the electric cake liners from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I want the one with the like orange, yellow, and the green. I want that so bad. I just think that looks like a actually more wearable way for me to get into line, the liner part because you know, a pop of liner versus like an entire blown out neon eyeshadow on a 33 year old lady. <laughs> I think I might be able to pull off a cake liner like that a little bit more confidently than I would being able to like confidently wear like hot pink or hot yellow, especially in Sweden. Maybe it's the fact that Sweden, I get so insecure about certain eye looks in Sweden. First of all, when I hang out with my husband's science friends, I'm the only one who wears makeup most of the time. And when I talk about like what I do in my spare time, like having a YouTube channel and stuff, I, I can feel people like glaze over and I, <laughs> And so I get pretty kind of insecure about that. But also people in Sweden dress very similarly. Like everybody kind of wears like black. If you, I, I rarely see people in like bright colors. It's usually like, it, it's very stylish, but still they, they don't do a lot of extravagant looks or at least not the people I'm around. So I think I get a little in my head in terms of like, am I a giant kid and, or do I look silly or foolish? Even though I know, I should know deep down that like makeup is for you and you alone and it doesn't matter what other people think. Sometimes I get a little insecure. And with that being said, I have one last eyeshadow palette that is in my Sephora fantasy cart and it is the Norvina Pro Pigment Volume 4, the last one that was released from ABH. And to me, that one looked like the grown up sister of the like little Norvina palette. This one here, which is actually my favorite palette from ABH. I love it and so seeing that bigger version with a lot of the same pinky purpley tones and it has like one really bright yellow in it, that, that one really also gets my interest and I would consider picking that up but I mean I think $60 is expensive but at least I know like you get a, a ton of variety and option in there but at the same time I'm, I'm also like 
you just got the gold palette for your anniversary gift, it's probably gonna be a while before I let myself buy a, a super nice eyeshadow palette again because I feel like, I, I don't wanna go too fast to where I'm not using the palettes that I just got, so if that makes sense. All right, and if you don't think I have a full cart, I still have three items left to talk to you about. These are all non-makeup items, but I, I would I would bite the bullet if I had a thousand dollars of fantasy money that I could spend. The first one would be a Sol de Janeiro Bum Bum Jet Set Pack. It looks like it has the shower gel, the mist, and the body lotion all together in like a little pack for $25, so I'm sure it's a little set of minis. But I would try that just because I have smelled the spray before in like a Sephora store, and I thought that the fragrance was amazing, and so I would definitely try that. And then the other two things are nail polishes. I don't know anything about Nails Inc. from Sephora, but these, they have two little sets of nail polish. One's a duo and one's a, like has four in there. And if you know anything about Nails Inc., I need you in the comments to let me know what you think about their formula because I am so tempted by this. The first one is the Flock You Nail Polish Duo. And it's got like this ear, or like it's got an like orange one that has, it's like a shiny, almost glittery, but not chunky glitters. Um, basically it's not a cream finish. I'm not a nail polish person, so I don't know what the name of the finish is, but it looks so beautiful. And then it's paired with this hot, bright fluorescent pink and I'm dying over neons right now. I want to get my hands on some more neon, neon nail polishes. I only have one and it's orange and it's not the best quality, but I love it. So I think if I found a formula that was pretty good, I would really enjoy getting some pink, some yellows. And with that being said, the other one, the, the set of four, that one's called Naked in Neon Nail Polish Set and it comes with like a kind of gray, taupey, like beige color, like your nude of the bunch. And then it's got like a bright orange, a bright yellowy green, like it looks like a highlighter color. And then the other one is like a corally pink, but still very bright. And those, I'm, I'm so interested in those. I really, 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 really want to try some more neon nail polish. And so those are also in my little fantasy cart. And with that being said, I'm pretty sure we're approaching 20 minutes, if not already there. So I should definitely wrap up this video, but make sure you say hello in the comments. Let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one.